Hello, hello. Welcome to the Pink Fresh Studio December 2022 release and blog hop. I'm Laura Evangeline, and I've created three versions of this card to share with you today. Although there are lots of amazing new products in this month's release, the one that particularly caught my eye was the Floral Border Stamp Set. It also has layering stencils, a hot foil plate, and coordinating dies available. I really had a hard time making just one card, so I ended up making three and I'll share all of those with you. I started all three cards in a similar way with this A2 piece of white cardstock, so it's cut to four and a quarter by five and a half. I'll be stenciling, so I pulled out a tacky mat here. It'll help me keep everything in place while I'm stenciling. Each one is labeled in the top left. You can't really see it in the video, but they're marked stencil one, two, three, and so on. There are also registration marks in the corners to help you line up your paper. The first color I'm going with is called Coral Reef. I like the mini inks because I can get a lot more for my money, and also they don't take as much storage space here in my craft room. They come in these sets of four that coordinate beautifully together. The set that this one is a part of is called Heartbeat. As with all of the Pink Fresh stencil sets, they're cleverly designed so you can use one color over each stencil and end up with a beautiful result. Or you can do something like I'm doing where I pick and choose blooms to highlight in different colors. You'll see in the end how this turns out. One thing I think that's really important between each stenciling layer is to wipe off any excess ink, ensuring that you push the ink away from the other colors so they don't cross over. I can't tell you how many times I was being lazy or trying to rush and I ended up with ink everywhere. It was a total disaster and ended up costing me more time than it should have. So that blue shade I used there was called Summer Shower. It's a part of the Morning Sky quad of inks. The next shade I'm using is one shade darker and it's called Seaside. So I'll use it over those same blooms to darken up on the accent pieces. The next color I'm going for is called Sparkling Rose. It's the second lightest shade in the Fairy Dust Quad. And I'm going to use it on the highlight or low light areas on the bloom that I went for with the coral color. I know these two colors aren't in the same quad, but I still think it's okay to mix and match them. So you can see here, I'm also using that same color on the base for these other blooms. Okay, that wraps it up for stencil number two. Don't forget to wipe it off. Yee, look at this reveal. I love this color combination of bright pink, coral, and a blue. It kind of puts me in the Valentine mood. I know we're not past Christmas yet, but when you're a card maker, you have to think about the holidays in advance. And if you're like me, they always get here before you're ready. I just can't ever keep up with what's in the now. Once I'm happy with that little cluster of blue flowers, I'll move over to these other two larger blooms. For the base, I'm going one shade deeper than the coral reef over to passion fruit. It's in that same quad of inks. And I'll use it here for these two larger blooms, as well as the accent areas over those pink ones that we did on the stencil before. All right, this layer is done. Now let's see what it's starting to look like here. Ooh, it's getting better and better. I think that red even pushes it even further into the Valentine zone. Okay, now we need stencil number four. And this one really just has some accent pieces over the blooms and then the center of a couple of those little blue flowers. So instead of going another shade darker, I'm going back in with passion fruit, which is the base layer of the flowers I'm coloring over now. And I'm just going over it with another layer. So it's going to deepen that color. The other open areas on this stencil layer are the centers of the little blue flowers. So I'm pulling out a shade of yellow called Marigold from the Rise and Shine quad, and I'll just color in all of those centers. The blooms are all done now, and we can move on to the fifth of the six stencils. This one is all of the greenery in one layer. So you can use several different shades on this if you want, but I'm going to just use this color called Meadow. It's a part of the Garden Stroll quad, and in order to get different tones, I'll just be more heavy-handed in certain areas and lighter-handed in others to get more of a gradient effect. Ta-da! It's so satisfying when I pull off those stencils. 
Okay, last stencil is all of the flower centers that we didn't color already. So back to the marigold color to fill all of those in and then we're done with the stenciling. If you haven't tried stenciling before, you may think this was a lot of steps to get to this point, but I find it a lot faster than coloring with markers or paints. The beauty of this Pink Fresh collection is it gives you a lot of options so you can choose whatever medium you like. At this point, I thought I might pull out the hot foil plate to add some gold or silver over the blooms, but I thought if you don't have a hot foil plate system, you can still get a similar look by using the stamp set. So I'm going to line everything up here in the stamping platform. It's called a Misty. Place everything right in order. Then you can close the door to secure the stamp. And because I have my card in there on that tacky mat, it's not going to go anywhere. It'll line up perfectly every time. To cut down on the static before I add heat embossing, I'll use an anti-static powder bag over the paper and get my heat gun fired up so it can warm up, be nice and hot. I'll add a bit of clear embossing ink to the stamp, close the door and smooth everything out so I get a nice impression. And we're ready to go with pouring on the powder and then heat it all up and watch the magic happen as the powder melts and turns into that foil glossy goodness. This card panel is really beautiful the way it is, so you could stop here, but I'm going to take that coordinating die, secure it in place, and run it through my die cutting machine so I'll get this nice frame that we can pop up. This is the point when my brain decided it wanted to go in three different directions. So I went ahead and colored and cut out another two sets of frames. For the first base, I chose a piece of blue cardstock. And for the sentiment, I was still thinking along the lines, if you didn't have a foil machine, how you could get that look. And I pulled out my collection of sentiment ephemera die cuts that Pink Fresh has. I really can't craft without these. They're a must have in my opinion. To soften up the area under the sentiment and kind of highlight that area, I pulled out some vellum and this die cut oval frame. I'm not going to use the actual frame, but rather the negative inside piece that maybe you wouldn't use. I'll save that frame for some other project in the future. Now let's get this frame popped up. My favorite adhesive, I use this on almost every project, are these foam strips. I just cut them to whatever length I like. I know some people might judge me for how much adhesive I use, but I stand by this. I go to town on every project every time because I do not want anything sagging or coming apart if this were to go through the mail, or hopefully someone keeps it for a really long time so I want it to last. The addition of liquid adhesive allows me a little bit of wiggle room when I'm placing it so I can get it in just the right position before it finally sets. Now that the base is done, we can go back to the sentiment here. See how the oval will fit there. There's a dip in the middle, so I will need to put some adhesive on the back of the oval. I also want the sentiment to stand up a little bit further, so I'll put some foam adhesive on the back of the sentiment then attach it to the oval, and then I'll flip it over and add foam adhesive to the back where you won't see it before sticking it down to the front of the card. To finish off this card, I added a few of the glitter drops in the shade Aqua, and I think this card is done. My second card starts out the same with that die cut, colored, and embossed floral border frame. But for the background, instead of using the vellum oval to add highlight to the center, I want to use inks in a kind of ombre look. To cheat a little bit, instead of starting with a piece of white cardstock, I'll start with a light blue, then use a medium shade to draw kind of the oval, then I'll go for a darker blue and add it around the exterior. I'll go back and forth between these two shades until I'm happy with the result. While the ink is still wet and drying, it can look a bit splotchy, but I know once these dry and settle out, it will look smooth and beautiful. To build up this background layer a bit more, I've taken some clear shimmer ink, white pigment ink, and then some metallic gold ink and splattered it all over the background before setting it to the side to dry. Another release for this month are these sentiment foil plates with matching dyes. The two I have say happy birthday and thank you in beautiful fonts with swoopy tails. 
they're nice and large you don't see sentiments this big very often so i love them after allowing my foil machine to heat up i followed the instructions in the manual to know which sandwich to put together for my machine then ran it through the die cutting machine to press all that foil into the paper I did pink and gold for this card, and here you can see how beautiful it turned out. Look how yummy this is. It sparkles and shines. After foiling a few pieces, I then took those coordinating dies and put them on the die cutting plate and ran them through the machine again. This time it cut everything out, so now we're ready to move on back to the card. Now that the background piece is good and dry, I can go ahead and add this floral frame with some foam, just as I did with the last one, and put it right here on the center front of the card. A bit of foam adhesive was also added behind the sentiment, as well as a bit of liquid glue right around the edge, so anywhere it touches the border frame behind it, it will be sure to adhere as the glue dries. I'd say that card is done. It doesn't need any extra embellishment with everything it has going on. Now I still have this last die cut frame to use up and in order to change things up a little bit, I've chosen a white embossed background and rotated the card so we're in portrait instead of landscape this time. The happy birthday foil was a little wide for what I thought was working so I pulled those die cut ephemera pieces back out again and found this piece that says thank you. I think it works nicely here. I'm returning back to the idea of the oval vellum frame to soften and draw the eye inward where the sentiment is. Since the background isn't as busy as the last one, I think I can go back and add a few of those glitter drops to finish this card off. And there we go. That was all three cards for you. I hope you enjoyed it. I also hope you'll check out the rest of the hop and enter the giveaway. Uh, let me know what you think. Until next time, stay crafty.